Back here with Muhammad, we're doing another video for you guys. In the last video, we did a really slick armbar escape. I really like that one. I'm gonna have to use that with my students and, and play around with it a bit. And then this one, he's gonna be showing you an option off of the armbar escape. So when they're trying to escape the armbar, um, this is a position I guarantee every one of you guys have been in at some point. He's got some slick little submissions to throw on to the end of it uh, that you can try out next time you're in class. So uh, Muhammad, thanks again for, uh, for coming, man. It's been a good time and uh, take it away. Yeah, so... The way I, the way I think jujitsu, is that it shouldn't be here, here, here. I mean, sometimes it can. If you're way better, way stronger, way heavier, it might work. If you just want, if you just have one option and you want to go for that, great. But most of the times, especially in tournaments, you have the guy in the same division, same experience, you know, same weight. And it's hard to do the same thing over and over and over. Mm. So you want to give them reactions. You know, you're going you're gonna to act, they're going to react, and now you're going to react too. You know, so that's why I love Jiu-Jitsu, because every day is going to be different. Even though you, you can be great in one specific position, but it, it might be different today for you. But now let's talk about the attack, right? What they want. They don't want ever to be, to have their arm extended, right? And what do I want? I want to extend their arms, right? It looks simple, it looks silly, but it's, it's hard to get it sometimes, especially against strong people with strong uh, grips or whatever. So let's go over different grips. For brown belt, let's say your brown belt or black belt, you can do the slices, the calf and bicep slices, which is a good thing. Let's say you're here, I like to grab my own lapel here, so now I can have the other hand free to do whatever, even punch him here or whatever. I like some people like to be here with the kind of kimura grip, which is great too. But for this specific position, let's use the own my own lapel here. Okay, I have my own lapel. He's defending. He's defending. I'm trying to push. He's pushing. I'm trying to pull. He's pulling too. It's gonna be a fight here. You know, so a fight means I can win, he can win, or whatever, you know. What I'd like to say is that every time you're controlling, you're not fighting. Because you're controlling. They do whatever you want them to do. But if you're fighting, it means you can lose. But if you control, you're not going to lose because you're controlling the whole thing. I don't know if that makes sense. No, it makes sense. Like yeah. You're saying we're controlling the position. We're, we're setting up options where we're in control of the situation rather than being in a... The way I interpret it was a situation where we both have an option, where we both have something where, again, I have control of something, you have control of something, and like, who does it better? Is that gamble? Yeah, yeah, like, it's a gamble. I'm, We're not gambling here. I'm controlling. So when I'm controlling, I assume that he's going to do whatever I give him to do. You know, if I don't give him anything, he's not going to do anything anymore. So his only option here is to survive. That's, all, that's the only thing he wants to do, survive. And that's great for me. So now... If we keep, if I keep pulling here, if we keep pulling, maybe he eventually he's gonna get tired, but I don't wanna wait for that. Let's see if I wanna get the submission now. So basically what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna come use my leg that's close to his legs over his wrist. I'm gonna release here just to show, just to show you guys. I wanna have my ankle here. For most people, you're gonna be able to break their grips just here, boom because they're not that strong anymore. As soon as you get here, boom, they're not strong. They're not as strong anymore. But let's say you're fighting like a really strong guy or really good dude who's not gonna let you break the grip. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna grab my chin and now I'm gonna put my ankle over his wrist here. So now I'm gonna close the triangle Boom, I close the triangle. Let's, let me try to do it fast. Boom, I close the triangle. And now, just to put pressure here, it's gonna start to be super uncomfortable Ooh, on his yeah. forearm, biceps, or even his joint over here. Yeah, everything is just tight. You know? So the more pressure I put here, the worse it's gonna get. So I get here, boom, yeah. If they don't release the grip, which is the, most of the times they're gonna do it, boom, I just grab it. If they don't, I'm just gonna get it. Oh, Damn. Uh, yeah, so now I use my blade against his biceps and man, 
is a super powerful position. I do from Kimura too. Sometimes I get here, instead of trying to put the hook inside, I'm just gonna close the triangle here. So that's when I start to, you know. So it's basically the same concept from different places. And man, I love that one. Let's say you don't get it, right? Maybe you don't have the flexibility or maybe the guy is just super strong and you don't wanna um, risk to be on your back. So let's say if they're defending super strong here, defending, defending, again, I'm gonna grab my lapel and now I'm gonna put my thumb inside his lapel here. Okay, so let's say I'm here, boom, 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 trying to break. Yeah, he's strong, I'm strong too. So now I'm gonna get my thumb all the way in there, as deep as I can. Boom. So now the first reaction they have, as soon as they have a little space here, they wanna sit up, right? That's the first thing. You, you're trying to defend number. If you see a space, you're gonna go up. So I'm here. I go all the way there and grab. So now I'm gonna give him the space he wants. Boom. Yeah, he's gonna come up. As soon as he came up, I'm gonna make his, this pillow over here so he doesn't go back anymore. Right? He doesn't go back anymore. So now I can basically scoop my hip, close my guard over here, and put my elbow all the way to the ground. I'm gonna do it loose so you can so you guys can feel the leverage, can see the leverage. So it's here it's super loose, but I can put it there and still get it right. Imagine if I tie here, boom, I get here, trying, fighting, fighting, boom, got it there. So now as soon as it come up. I lock it. If they don't, if they don't come up, you can just pull them up. Boom. Here. Let's say you're fighting a super strong guy with no neck or whatever. You can always go back. Let's say if you need points or something. You can go all the way there, put the hooks in, get your points and stay here with the same grip. Now if you don't get it from here or from here, you can just grab the lapel here. Now you push it away and do the same leverage with your elbow. Here, the first one, I can do with either arm. Let's say if I have this arm here, I can, I can also come here, blah, blah, blah. If I don't break it, here, boom, one. The second one, I'm trying to break, trying, trying, trying. Get in there, thumb in, boom, grab it, make this little pillow. So now I'm lean to my side as I put pressure on, on his neck. If I need points, hook, and try to finish. If I can, I push it away. If I don't get anything, I go back to the same position. You know, so you're not really risking much. And I love that kind of thing, man, when you don't risk, you know, mm. especially of us, like big people, you don't want to, you don't want to risk and, you know, like you, you don't, you don't want to make the mistake of having a hundred percent control and then losing everything and now have to start over again. Yeah. When I, and I think that also kind of getting to it, that's an important thing to sort of illustrate. So for you guys watching. You know, think about the things, the positions you find yourself in. You need to have, like you were talking about at the beginning of the video, the chains, right? Like you, you can't just have one thing that you do all the time. I mean, a lot of times it does work, but you know, you need to have things that like build off of the other ones. And this is, I don't know what you think about this. This is one of the things that I think is really good about having training partners that you train with for a long time that stop your stuff. Cause like you might go to the tournament and your, your move A works. The first one you do works perfectly. But then if you go to the tournament and then like, or you go to the training and your buddy says, no nah, man, like I'm gonna stop that move. You know, like, cause I know that you do it all the time. So then you gotta be like, all right, so what am I gonna do next? And that's why, where you end up developing these chains of movement. So then like, if you go against the guy at the tournament, then he's like, he's looking for move A. You're yeah. like, I got move B waiting for you. Exactly. You know, you got those chains. There is like, there is two ways to improve your strong game. By your training partners defending it or by injuries. You know when you get hurt and you have to you have to adapt yourself you to, to do this stuff, mm -hmm. and that's why like that's why I love jujitsu. Cause sometimes, <coughs> man, you great, you you good, you've been doing good, you're training good, you dedicate yourself, you're eating good, you're feeling strong, you're confident, everything's working for you, great. 
and now your knee is bad now. And let's say if you, all, all your techniques is coming from that knee, you have to adjust yourself if, if you don't want to stop training, you know. Of course, if it's a bad injury, you should rest. I'm not telling you to, you know, train. <laughs> yeah, if you hurt, keep training. No, I'm, say, I'm not saying that. But sometimes you have some pains here and there, necks, backs, lower backs or whatever, that you can still train. You're not hurt, but you can still train, but you have a little pain. So that's when you have to adjust your game, you know, to be able to keep doing good, you know, regardless of your pain. So that's how you relearn Jiu Jitsu, mm, right? Yeah. So the more, like, the more I train Jiu Jitsu, the more I understand that I don't know everything, man. I don't know anything, to be honest. I, you, you still have a lot of gaps. You know, you might be a black belt here, but you, you might still be a white belt over here. So that's the beauty of the thing. That's why I love that so much. That's why I keep thinking about that 24 hours because man, it's great. You have a lot of options. And every time I go to the gyms, I have the privilege to travel, you know, and learn a lot from a lot of people. And you always going to see, man, something. If you're open, if your eyes are open, you're always going to see some stuff that you can learn from, you know, regardless of belt. Some white or blue belts can teach you stuff that other people don't see, it. you know, that's the beauty of the thing. Awesome. Go to your gym and the next time you're fighting for an arm bar and you can't quite get it because the guy's really strong not breaking the grip, try one of those options out. And again, if you'd like to find more videos from him, he's got some good stuff out there. I'll put the links down below and you guys can find out more from Muhammad and uh, definitely follow his Instagram too. He's always doing like backflips and crazy stuff <laughs> on there. So, uh, thank you, brother. Thank you, man.